Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, then welcome to my channel. My name is Danny. If you have been subscribed to my channel for a little bit, you might know that I haven't posted in quite a while. It's been about five months. I figured I should probably make a video explaining what's been going on, considering the fact that I haven't posted. I know it was like kind of random. I just kind of stopped posting. I'm gonna be doing my makeup today and talking to you guys about the last few months of my life. The last time that I really uploaded before today was when I had my long brown hair with my pink bangs and I had uploaded a thrift try on haul. At that point I was living with my boyfriend at the time. I did mention that I think once in that video but I didn't really talk about it very much. In June of 2020 I flew from New Mexico to Pennsylvania to go visit family. I was gonna be staying with my grandma at her house for a few months. I met a dude there and I ended up really liking him. I will not say his name. I mean people who know me closely, like my friends know who I'm talking about. Honestly, a lot of people who have me like on Facebook and stuff will probably know who I'm talking about and I just don't really think that it's necessary to specifically name him. We ended up developing feelings pretty quickly. My home life had been kind of tumultuous before I had left to go visit Pennsylvania. I've never really been a desert person, so New Mexico was never really somewhere that I planned on staying for too long. And I always wanted to move back to Pennsylvania because it was kind of like home. I ended up moving out there and living with this dude and his two moms. It was very nice of them to let me stay there. His moms were great. Our relationship started off pretty well. I was very enamored by him. He kind of just seemed like this dream dude and it was a pretty great time in the beginning when we had just met. Then around like August or September, things just got kind of messy, I guess. Like I found out he was cheating on me and he tried to like make a bunch of excuses and it was that type of thing where he was just kind of like not being honest about it even though I had found it out. It wasn't really a question, it was pretty obvious from the messages. But that happened and I really cared for him and we also lived together which made it a lot more difficult to just kind of like break up. So I forgave him. He was very convincing and I felt like he deserved another chance. It just kind of kept happening so many times, but I was in love with him and we lived together and he had control of a lot of things in my life, just situationally. I didn't have a car out there, things like that, so I was kind of alienated. I didn't really have a lot of other people close to me there. So we stayed together for a while and then Harder drugs got involved and he kind of went a little crazy. I don't really know how else to describe it, but that's, I guess, the best way. Things just kind of got really insane. And honestly, around that time, so probably like October-ish is when it started getting really bad, it honestly feels like a movie or something when I think about it because so many things that happened were just so unreal. I didn't really have anyone to talk to about it because I didn't want anyone to be like insanely worried about me so I just kind of didn't. I didn't really tell anyone anything that was going on and stopped posting on most things and stopped talking to most people um, because I guess that's like just a thing that happens when you're in an abusive relationship. It was very lonely. I only had one friend and my boyfriend didn't like her, so I ended up just not really hanging out with her. After a little while, there was a point where we didn't really talk at all, and he wasn't interested in listening to anything I had to say. So I basically had no one, 
and it was really pretty terrible. Things ended up getting really bad and he crashed his car and got some charges. It was another one of those things that didn't really feel real. He ended up getting arrested. We had no idea like where he was or what was going on because he didn't get a phone call for about 36 hours that he was getting questioned. That was just traumatic because we had no answers and I just thought that he had like run away or something. His family bailed him out. I decided to stay with him because I thought that that was kind of what needed to happen for him to realize that he had gotten really dependent on drugs. I thought that he was going to kind of like get clean and get his stuff together, but it just ended up being a little too difficult with being in love with him, but having to see him go through withdrawals and trying to help and take care of him while he's not acting like himself because he's going through withdrawals. A lot of the stuff that he did when we were together and he was doing drugs was just really messed up things that I kind of was like a little traumatized by. And as much as I tried not to think about those things, um, I just kind of did all the time. And it's hard when you're trying to make it work with someone and you get flashbacks all the time of like terrible things that happened while you were together in the months prior. I just decided that for my mental health it would be better if I um, went back to New Mexico. So that's what I did and it was one of the most difficult decisions I've ever made in my entire life because I really was in love with this dude and it's like really unfortunate when people aren't honest in relationships and you're putting so much into it. I mean, perspective wise, I moved across the country for this person, essentially. It was just a really, in the end, unfortunate situation. A lot of it, that's like the only way that I know how to describe it, is unfortunate. I had gotten to a point where my eating disorder got really bad and that was another thing that I had just kind of started finally getting help for. And then when I moved, I just got pretty much immediately involved in a super toxic relationship that kind of destroyed all my progress and I was like really miserable so that kind of showed in the fact that I lost a ton of weight. I'm kind of like finally getting my life together. It's weird, I have to kind of remember how to be a human again and actually focus on myself. I got really used to having someone to take care of and worry for constantly and now that that's not a thing anymore, I actually have room to worry about myself, which is strange but nice. It's really weird coming out of a situation like that and kind of figuring out what to do with everything that happened just because of the timeline. Like, I only lived in Pennsylvania for six months. Really thinking about everything that happened in those six months, it kind of makes it seem like a lifetime. It was a lot to deal with in such a short amount of time. Now I kind of don't really have a choice but to process through all of that because I was kind of wrapped up in all of it so I didn't get a chance to process how I was feeling. I feel like anyone who's been in an abusive situation and then gotten out of it and kind of been in like a little bit of shock because you have to figure out a new normal um, maybe you would understand, and even if not, I hope that I'm describing it in a way that makes sense. There was definitely a lot of codependence involved, and when I had recently gotten out of this relationship and moved back, it was like right before Christmas, and I was like grieving and still kind of in love with him, so I didn't fully see how terrible he had been to me. When I finally got distance and was able to reconnect with myself a little bit again, I 
was able to see pretty clearly that everything that he did was very consistently terrible. <laughs> I am practicing boundaries and healthy distance and knowing that thinking that I could be just friends with him wasn't very realistic. I took that out of the equation and now I am just making space for myself and that's been working out pretty well for me. I was pretty miserable when I was still trying to talk to him and not feel the hurt actively. I just realized that I couldn't heal if I still had connections to him. I get the chance to build a new life now, which is nice. I'm rediscovering a thing called confidence. That's neat. I cut all my hair off and it is pink now. I know it's all gonna be okay and it's like not really something that I can just expect to heal from in a few months because it's a lot to process but I think I'll be okay. I know that I'm capable of great things. So anyways, hopefully that made sense and wasn't too rambly. Basically, I just was in a really bad place mentally and emotionally and it was really rough. We were homeless for a little while. It was just a whole mess. But I'm back and restabilizing my life and figuring things out and being healthy. So things are looking up. I really did miss making videos. It makes my heart happy. I'm very creative and creative things make me feel fulfilled. So I'm glad to be back to editing videos and filming for you guys. I will definitely have more poetry videos up soon because I've been writing quite a bit. I can make another update video soon where I kind of talk more about present day, what I'm focusing on. In general, I think I kind of got you guys up to speed on what happened while I was gone. I will talk to you guys soon. Definitely check out my last video if you haven't already. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't and like this video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below if you have any questions or thoughts and definitely click the bell down below so you can get notified every time I upload and never miss a new video. I love you guys a lot. I appreciate you so much. You're wonderful and the world is so much better with you in it. Thank you guys again for everything. Thank you for 1,000 subscribers. I really appreciate you guys and I'll talk to you guys soon.